Welcome back to Spinners with Balls, part three. So in the first part, it was these three spinners plus a fourth one, which my youngest son stole and now can't find anywhere whatsoever. So in these three designs, they were all splines and all used quarter inch shot and BBs. Then in the second batch, we had these two little guys. They were three-dimensional, as I was calling it, since they're layered. And they also include quarter-inch shot and BBs. And this just fell and broke the tip off, and I'm really sad. So in this edition of Spinners with Balls, I bring you these two designs. This I'm calling Spacely Sprockets. And I'm dating myself by using that. So it's basically like a sprocket for a bicycle, and this is quarter inch shot and BBs. And then this design, which I can't even think of a name, we'll just call it the wheel. And it's simple quarter inch shot, and it's a toroid design with some pipes in the center. So let's see how these were made. Here's the first spinner for today's video. This is spinner nine on the STL. I'll pull up the sketch for this one. And it's basically a bunch of circles. It looks like a lot of work, but it's actually very simple. I'll go ahead and zoom out a little just so that I can add some more. In this case, you would simply place your circle wherever you want it in the design. Then you would go in and do sketch, circular pattern, select the actual object, select your center point, and then you can add in as many as you want. Uh, if it's a large number, it will probably be much easier if you just key in the number. And there you have 25 more circles. Quick and easy. So for this design, I did the spot for the bearing, the larger circle to know where the 40 millimeter radius limit was, sketched in these two sections of circles for the quarter inch still shot, this section for the BBs, and then this section on the outer edge is to add texture for the final piece. So I'll stop the sketch. And then simply after the sketch is complete, all I did was extrude this up seven millimeters, and then I chose to do a fillet on everything, and then remove the two for the centers where the central bearing goes. This was extremely quick. You can do this design in three to four minutes, tops. So the second design on this video is this. This is labeled as Spinner 10 on the STL. This one's a little more complex. So let's pull up the sketch. We have the center bearing, an outer rim, and I'm sorry, an inner rim and an outer rim and then a line segment. After those were in place, I placed a toroid that goes around the outer rim. This one is actually solid. Then I extruded the center up seven millimeters and did an offset from the base since the toroid is, I believe, 12 millimeters in diameter and the central hub is only seven millimeters so it does need to be offset from the base plane. Then I added a pipe along that line segment that was placed. Did a fillet on those to give those a little better look by rounding those in. Then I duplicated those out as a circular pattern. Did my fillets where I constructed a tangent plane. That allows you to place a plane on a curve. In this case, I placed it against one of these hubs allows me to place the holes along the toroid. I made a sketch to create a circle to drop a single hole through for the quarter inch bearing, extruded that out, and then did a circular pattern for the remainder of the holes. Uh, did some chamfers around those holes, top and bottom, and then did a fillet around that edge to smooth that out. Uh, this design, from conception to completion and ready to print, I would say was about 45 minutes. Uh, longer than it probably needed to be. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to connect the toroid to the central hub. 
and I did a few different size variants of the toroid. And that's why it took a little additional time than I thought it would. So let's go see how they spin. Sets of STLs that are included in the description include the finger grips that pop on to the center hub. So these can be printed as well. And in the case of this last batch, the STL also includes these little spacers for this design. Uh, once you hammer the quarter inch steel shot into the side, you'll use the spacer, set it on top, and then finish hammering in so that you space the bearing uh, dead center into the toroid. So how well do these spin? Uh, these are using reds and they spin fairly well. I'm getting 30 to 45 seconds and they're simple reds, not ceramics. While this is a very heavy design, I think if the BBs were left out, it might actually spin faster since more of the weight would be distributed towards the outer edge. Uh, the toroid also spins. It might actually spin longer. I haven't actually timed it, but it seems like it spins better. Uh, this one might be off balance because each of the bearings and steel shot can be slightly different in weight and size. I know when I measured them they are. So that could be causing an imbalance in this design. I know there's a fair amount of flutter with this. So anyway, those are the designs. And it should be the last part in the series of spinners with balls. My family secretly thinks that I don't have any more designs in my head, so I won't stay up at night doing these designs. But the truth is, I have other designs. They're in my mind. I must get them out. Don't tell them. They'll take me away. So until next time, keep designing.